Hey everyone, this is Tara. I am the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat. Welcome to Moon Magic Mixed Media Painting Class. Tonight we are going to paint um, and create this fun mixed media piece here. This is actually uh, kind of a reboot of my very first uh, online lesson that I did almost six years ago now and I really like it. It's kind of fun to change up and try to take in a new direction. So I'm really excited to do that with you. So give me just a second here and I am going to switch my camera and show you my desk and then we will get started. All right, everyone, before we get started, let's go over supplies. So the most important thing to have is something to create on. Uh, I've got a 12 by 12 canvas board here, um, and this is what I'm going to use, but we are kind of de designing our own. So you can use any size that you would like. You can use a canvas panel, uh, you can use a wood board, you can use uh, mixed media or watercolor paper. Um, you can use a normal canvas and you can use any size that you'd like um, and just adjust your design, you know, larger or smaller based on that. So something to create on. Um, I've got some scrapbook paper here. This is available as a printable as well. Um, if you've got your own that you'd like to use, you can round that up. Um, the other principles that are available is I've got some um, what I call viney things and so I just included these to give you a sample something to reference from um, feel free to come up with your own viney things when we get to that point um, I've got some flower doodles that are available for you to use uh, feel free to use these or you can do to your own flowers uh, the principles are totally optional but I like to include them so you have everything you might want. As far as paint goes today, um, because I've got a lot of pat pastels in the uh, paper, scrapbook paper that I chose, I've just got a variety of pastel colors. Um, of course, you can use uh, any colors that you want for the background. Um, I do have some mixed media supplies, so aside from basics like scissors, maybe a ruler, glue, colored, um, not colored pencils, uh, paint brushes, uh, I also have some things uh, like I've got paint markers available and I've got gel pens available, so I'll use those later. I've got some fluid matte medium. Um, we're using this to adhere some of the paper onto our artwork. Um, and so I've got matte fluid medium you can substitute with Mod Podge or even white glue. Um, I have some stamps since I'm doing kind of a moon theme. I pulled out some stars, but again, you could um, do doodles instead of stamps. You could use stencils, um, whatever you've got. I pulled out some uh, supplies that I like to make marks with is also. Sometimes I'll include things like this in my artwork and just use them as stamps, but um, I've just rounded those up. Um, I pulled out some archival ink, might use that. So just get a variety of supplies, some different stuff to play with. Um, you can always make those decisions as you're creating as well. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm gonna move all my papers to the side and the first thing we're gonna do is get some paint on this canvas. So again, this is where you can make your own um, executive decision as far as the color choices, but I'm gonna pull out some blues and purples. And um, I'm just using craft paint for this, but you could certainly use any kind of paint you have available. So the first part of the assignment here is we are just going to lay down some color in patches. So I'm going to start here with my darkest. And 
And I want different patches of color all over this background. So I'm just gonna start laying down some color and then I feel I've got enough of this color. I'm gonna move on to the next. And there's no right or wrong way to get this color on here. We're just covering up this background. So just be playful and have fun. And as I'm adding paint, these colors might blend together and that is absolutely okay. Like I said, we're just getting some color on the palette here. Right, now that I've got some color on here, um, I can go back and I'm just going to make some decisions and add some variation in my background. So I've got these colors uh, on my board and what I'm going to do is just uh, wherever I see, so I've got blue up here and maybe I want to pull some of that blue down so I might add just patches of this color, maybe some lines. Uh, I'm just overlapping areas with some patterns, so uh, kind of unifying the placement and busying up the, the background design. So I've got purple on here. I might pull some of that purple into other areas. And while I do this, I'm thinking of ways to add repetition, ways to just spread out that color, just kind of having fun with this abstract background. mix a little bit definitely just playing this is playful so just get in here um, and don't be afraid to, to just put paint on your canvas we're mixing things up we're shaking things up um, it's just a fun abstract background most important thing at this point in the game is just to make sure we're getting some good coverage on this background. Um, so just don't be afraid to play, add lots of fun layers, really just abstract this up.
And when you feel like you're done with this, I encourage you just to add a little bit more. We're really going in for some busyness. So just don't overthink it, play. And when you feel like you've got a lot going on, add just a little bit more. Just stretch the limit there just a little bit. course when we go abstract um, our designs are going to be very different so if your painting doesn't look like my painting that's totally okay at this point we are just adding color um, and that's all we need to do so what I'm going to do now is dry this um, a little bit and then we are going to add uh, some vines that you can certainly use um, just as reference uh, or you can come up with your own. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of these background colors. Um, I'm going to go with this purple and I may change it just slightly. I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to go right with this purple. Um, and then I'm going to grab a pencil or pen. I'm going to cover it up so it doesn't really matter. Um, what I use, let's see, will this show up? I think this will show up on camera. Um, but all I'm going to do is just doodle some, some vines here. And we're just going to kind of fill up this background with some curvy, twirly, viney things. So once you sketch your design, I'm just going to grab uh, a thin uh, paintbrush here, Let's see. nice thin round, um, and I'm just going to start painting these in. Now the fun part about using your background color is some of this is going to fade off into the background and some is going to be more obvious. So in areas where I have this purple, it's not going to jump out of the page. Um, whereas areas where I may have blue or this um, mint color, uh, you'll see the vines a lot easier. And that's kind of what we're going for. So we want this to be both separate from the background and a part of the background in the same way. I sketched in my vines and now I'm just going 
going over them with the purple paint and then I will come back in the next step and add some leaves on these vines. All right, so I've got my vines kind of planted out here. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add leaves onto my stems. So um, for this, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna sketch some small leaf shapes on here. You can add small leaves or large leaves. Again, the, the viney things you choose for your background are totally your call. This process can be a little time consuming, but uh, what I encourage you to do is just turn off the thinking part of your brain and just kind of be meditative about how you're placing these. There's no rush.
Alright, so I have gotten all my vines drawn on and added leaves all around. So this is what I've got so far. And as you can see, there are places where the vines are really um, clear and apparent. And then there are other places where they kind of blend in more with the background. And I really like that. That's, that's what I was going for. So at this point in the game, do not evaluate your piece too much. Give it uh, some grace. We've got quite a few more steps to work through. All right, for the next step, I'm gonna grab a pencil and sketch in my moon. And uh, the easiest way to do this um, is to get a lid or something round um, and just trace around it. So I'm gonna put my moon. Now, um, if you visualize about halfway across your painting um, would be your, your center. I'm gonna place mine a little off center. So up in the upper left quadrant. And then I'm just gonna trace around, this is just my paint water, right? But that gives me uh, a nice circle. And then I can use that to help draw in my crescent moon. And this is just a sketch, so um, I'm gonna paint right over it. But uh, the first part of the moon, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to paint a layer in white and then I'm going to come back and paint in my yellowish color. So this white is just going to neutralize uh, everything underneath it by adding this layer of white. And this will help me define my shape here. And then of course we want this layer to dry. So I'm gonna zap it with my dryer real quick. And then I'm gonna pull out my yellow color. Now I don't have a real bright yellow. Um, I've actually got this, uh, this is called buttermilk which is really kind of an off-white, and I might just add a pinch of yellow to it. Um, but I'm not going for a crazy bright yellow. And then I'm just gonna put a second layer on this moon for my moon color. But of course, you can use whatever tone of yellow uh, or moon color that you want. You could even leave it white because white um, is totally an okay color for the moon. So, whatever you want to do. Next step, uh, we are gonna go into some creative mark making. So this really is where the sky is the limit. Don't overthink. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a paint pen, uh, or a, a gel pen here, and I'm just gonna do some uh, scribble writing. And I love scribble writing, but you can do really any mark making that you would like. So. Um, as far as scribble writing goes, what I like to do is just write kind of illegibly uh, across my page and just add some scribbles and
And so the fun thing about using a gel pen is this one kind of started and stopped and um, you know there are areas where it's more legible than others and I love that. I love that look and so I'm going to add this maybe one or two more places and when I do this I just think of words and I kind of smush them together. But the idea here is not to have something that you can read so much as to have some some fun little scribbles. Like I said, feel free to get creative with your mark making. You don't have to do the same things that I do. Um, you can use pencil, you can use um, pastels, you can use acrylic paint markers, you can use Posca pens, you can use um, Sharpie markers. So the sky is the limit here. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, I don't know, maybe some designs here around the edge of the moon. Have these stamps that I pulled out so maybe I'll play with those a little bit It's okay to have things overlap. Don't ever, don't ever worry too much about that stuff when we are doing a layered piece. That adds depth and uh, some visual interest. So, so I added a few star stamps. What else could I do? Maybe I'll pull out some of these lids. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to pull out some of your other colors as well. So, you know, I've got this, this lid here, oops, um, and I can just dip this right into some paint and I can, you know, use this as a stamp. So just some fun, creative mark making. Don't over it, have a good time. The best part about mixed media really is the ability to play. So. So once you've got some marks on there and you don't have to go too crazy, uh, we are going to move on to the next step where we add in our flowers. All right, so I'm just going to set this aside and we're going to work on creating our flowers. So you want to pull back out your scrapbook paper. Um, I'm going to show you how I used these. Of course, you can use, you know, you can doodle your own designs, whatever you want to do. Um, I decided I want to use these as my reference here and what I'm going to do uh, an easy easy way to do this if you have the option is you can cut your scrapbook paper down to um, eight and a half by eleven size and feed it through your printer um, it's okay to have these lines on your paper because we're going to paint over that we're going to cover up the outline anyway um, or if you have transfer paper you can use that or uh, if you don't have either of those as an option, you can use a pencil, uh, scribble on the background here, 
Maybe that pencil. Uh, so scribble on the background of the flower that you printed. And you don't have to even use the printable. You can, you know, flower in a magazine. Uh, you can doodle your own, whatever you want to do. Um, but I'm going to use this as a transfer because, because I like these flowers. Um, and then what you can do, I'm going to trim this down just so I can see what I'm doing. So I've got my, my pencil lead on the background there, or pencil graphite. And then I can just place this where I want it. I'm gonna tape mine down just so it doesn't move on me. And then I'm gonna come grab a pen and then just trace this and this will transfer that graphite onto my scrapbook paper and then I'll be able to see it and I'll have the design on my scrapbook paper. And usually when I transfer, um, I'm kind of loose with it. So these designs are free use, uh, so you can certainly use them exactly as they are. However, um, if you want to change it and make it your own, you don't have to use these at all. So do you, whatever makes you happy. And then when you lift it up, you'll be able to see a very faint transfer. Um, now I can see this very clearly with my eye and I know it's gonna be very subtle on the camera. Um, but you can, you can see it. Much better with the eye than on the camera. But it does transfer for you. So uh, if you need to, you can go over that transfer. I can see mine just fine. So I am gonna cut that, cut them out. And all I want to do at this point um, is just make sure uh, that I'm cutting around the outside edge. The design I picked has lots of petals, so this might take me a while. But that's okay.
And when you are done, you should just end up with two flowers with the outline cut out that we are going to adhere onto our art piece. To be honest, I might even uh, go back and make a third flower. So I want to have three of these to play with. I'm just going to make another one of the small ones. to work in odds so that's why I'm going back and making another flower I think three might look better than two but I'll have to play with the placement say make it your own. Sometimes you just think about what you're doing and you have to make those executive decisions as you go because you want your piece to be one that you absolutely love. All right, so I'm going to cut out this third flower and then we'll be ready to go for the next step.
we go. I've got three flowers. And then you're gonna back your piece of art and we are just gonna play with the placement. And so I've got mine slightly off center. We kind of wanna balance. So you've got this big heavy area with the moon. And so um, I'm gonna decide on that placement there. And then I am gonna pull out my matte medium. Now what you need to be careful with the matte medium is that your, um, if you use gel pen, Posca pen um, on your background, that is still going to be uh, movable. So be careful when you're using the matte medium to uh, apply your flowers. So what I encourage you to do is put a nice thick layer on the back of the flower versus putting it on uh, your artwork there and then placing that on coming back with a layer over the top and sealing it but just be aware of what you used on that background because you don't want to activate and move any of your um, your doodles your background stuff so we are going to adhere this with our matte medium. Again, if you don't have matte medium, Mod Podge is a nice substitute or uh, even uh, white glue. You can thin it down a little bit. All right, now we need to let these babies dry. So if you have a heat gun or a hair dryer, now is the time to dry these flowers. Um, because the next step we're gonna do, uh, we need these to be dry. We don't wanna mess up our markers. So I'm gonna zap these with my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, sometimes you can just take paper um, and make some air and that will help quicken the drying process. said for the next step we want this to be dry uh, what I'm going to do is use a white paint pen I like to use Posca's they are my fave but um, any acrylic paint pen will work or a Posca pen uh, but what I'm going to do is start doing some outlining so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my moon a white outline That's just going to clean up the edge a little bit. And 
And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do the outline around these flowers. And so depending on which flower you choose, the outline might be different from mine. But basically I wanna accentuate this flower with the outline and the doodles. So on the inside of these petals, you know, some of mine have these lines. And this is really going to make those flowers pop. Alright, then once I have the outline of my flowers, what I'm going to do um, is add my stems. And so I kind of want these stems to, uh, I don't want to make my stems right over my background uh, vines. So I'm going to make sure that they are a little bit different. So just taking each flower into consideration. 
this down. And so far, I really like what's going on here. So the next uh, steps really are just adding um, more fun, more doodles, and some of your finishing touches. So some ideas uh, for you are wavy lines, straight lines, dots, uh, zentangles, paisleys, hearts, raindrops, arrows, spirals, leaves, uh, more of the viney things, music notes, stars, um, the sky is the limit. So just think about uh, the composition of your background. Take a step back, look where there might need to be more um, visual, uh, more busyness, and just start adding some fun in. So I might start with some dots. I'm gonna continue with this Bosca pen here. Since I've already got it out, And um, keep in mind, you know, if you add an element in one place, maybe uh, bring that element somewhere else in the piece as well. Repetition uh, makes a lot of artwork come together. So I try to keep that in mind. You can add paint, uh, you can add stamps. So when I say the sky is the limit, y'all, do not be afraid to just add some really fun stuff.
So I'm just adding in some dots and some doodles and filling in shapes with color. So whatever you want to do to make this unique in your own, that is how we are going to finish this off. And then I will just give a word of caution. If you are going to varnish this, if you have any water soluble medium, um, like gel pen, uh, Stabilo All Pencil, uh, Distress Crayon, um, any of those kind of supplies, just make sure that you use a spray varnish um, to seal it because if you use a brush on varnish, uh, some of your doodles and beautiful things might come up and we don't want that. We want all of those great things to stay put. So um, just keep that in mind. And so right now I'm just continuing to add some doodles and some fun and that's really uh, all that's left to do. have moon magic everybody thank you so much for joining me um, I always like to give a special shout out to my supporters who um, have joined and given their support for only $4.99 a month and they get each and every lesson um, so I super appreciate you supporters thank you so much for joining me tonight um, thank you to everybody who joined this lesson I can't wait to see what you create um, I have a special group for um, anyone who creates with me called uh, Paint, Rinse, Repeat, the group. Uh, so feel free to find that on Facebook. Um, and if you are not part of that group or don't want to be part of that group, feel free to tag me um, on the social medias um, at Paint, Rinse, Repeat or at Paint, Rinse on Twitter. I can't wait to see what you create. I look forward to seeing all your beautiful pieces. Thank you so much for taking time out to be creative today and spending that time with me. Have a great night, everybody.